What's going on, people? Let's have a conversation. This is a popular target topic. How to become a millionaire, the truth no one tells you step by step. I got a few things that I need to share with you guys. Some of the stuff I've learned after all these years of being in business. For the majority of the time that I was in business, well, let's say, the storage auction years, I was not a millionaire. <laughs> Never got to that level. There was times had a million bucks in the bank, but wasn't, quote, a millionaire. Well, at that time, I was a cash money millionaire, but that was very temporary. That wasn't like for the whole year or even for that many months for that matter. The first time that I became a sustainable millionaire, where I made a million dollars, and after I made the million dollars, I became a millionaire and stayed a millionaire, was this YouTube thing with my first book. That's what did it. And this is the funny thing is, it didn't take that long. From start to finish, it was about three years. And one of the things I want to share with you is what allows people to become millionaires are a certain type of vehicles. If you get the right vehicle, it can be very, very quick. And business is the right vehicle. You know, I had the storage auction business, had high income, but wasn't, quote, a millionaire. Had a very good lifestyle. <coughs> um, but once again, you know, if you want to become a millionaire, you need a vehicle. You need the right vehicle. And this is something else, too. As I looked upon my behavior during that time period, um, I became obsessed with time. Time was very, very important to me because I'm just going back and I'm uncorking it and looking at it. And because, you know, I, I had goals, I had deadlines. Time was super important. Time was more important than money. I had to get this book written at a certain time. I had to put it out. I promoted it. And within three years, I was a millionaire. Three years. And I would say many of the lessons that I've learned prior to those three years contributed to it because when I was in that boarding house, I didn't have any of these attributes to my personality. I wasn't focused. I didn't care about time. I cared more about money. And this is one of the things that if you want to become a millionaire, you got to care more about time than you do money. When you care about money, this is how you end up working two and three jobs. When you care about money, your main focus is money. Money. I'm going to work this part-time job. I'm going to work these two jobs. I'm going to work these three jobs. When you get a millionaire mindset, time becomes very, very important. If you could spend $100,000 to save time, you would do that. Because time is money. But many people who don't have the millionaire mindset don't realize that time is money. They look at money as money. So one of the things you got to do is adjust your priorities and look at time. Give you an example. When I wrote the book, because I didn't know any of this was going to happen. But I was operating on a system. Because one of the things I knew from trying to write three times, putting books out, <clears throat> was that I had to promote it because I understood business. So I marketed my book before I even started writing it. This is one of the things I've learned because time, time is a very big part of getting money. And I knew that Typically, you know, reading a lot of stuff, reading about movies and the budgets they have for marketing movies and stuff. And they'll start marketing that movie months before it comes out. Crime example, Star Wars, the final episode is coming out in December. They've been marketing that for like three months because it takes time for you, the consumer, to get it because you're like, living your life, driving down the highway, doing what you do, 
and it's going to take 21 to 25 exposures to that content for you to get it. So once again, you know, just going back, unpacking, looking at some stuff, it was a system in the right vehicle. What's up, pro style, Liberty Life? Liberty Life, what's your opinion on the right vehicle? For each and every person, that's going to be different. <laughs> because for me, what worked for me was I went back to my natural dream. I wanted to be a writer. I wanted to be a communicator. So once I got on purpose, in my purpose, something that I enjoyed. I enjoyed writing a book. I enjoyed communicating. I enjoyed the whole process. So I was on my purpose. So the right vehicle for you will probably be totally different than the right vehicle for me. I've been able to make a lot of money as a media personnel, as a, communer, a communicator. Because what of a book? A book is written communication. A video. It's verbal. It's a video of written of video. It's communication. This is new media. And I've been able to make a gang of money from new media because I enjoy this. This isn't like, you know, whenever I do a uh, how to do YouTube video on the channel, a lot of people are like, I don't want to do YouTube. And the views are low because you don't enjoy that stuff. But I do. So your right vehicle is going to be in alignment with your purpose. That's why I keep saying, you know, stop trying to, you know, like the video, like the stream I did earlier today about if you want to make 100K, this is if you have no purpose, you don't know what you're doing, you just out here on the block hanging with your boys, go, go to oil fields. But if you're not Broke Dick Danny and you're in a situation where, you know, you um, can ponder a few things, figure out what your purpose is. Your right vehicle is going to be in close alignment, whatever that is. Give you an example. Um, let me let me find this for you. YouTube blanket channel. trying to find this um youtube sewing channels all right i'm having a hard time finding this but I will bring you into this. Okay. It's a sewing channel. It's a it's a story about this woman. She put her sewing channel and they made blankets on YouTube and it just literally blew up. She was able literally to employ people in that town and buy a lot of buildings. So... don't know if that's going to be part of it but that's what she did and she was able to make a lot I mean millions and millions of dollars with selling blankets selling stitch patterns and stuff because that was in alignment with her purpose you know so once again the right vehicle for you is going to be closely aligned to your purpose. Whatever, you know, and if you're in a situation where you don't know what that is, then it is up to you to start searching. So one of the things you want to do is make a list of 100 things you like to do and start exploring these.
Mandy Ray, transits are generally three years to resign. I love this message. Bertha Cool, hey Glenn, when did you learn most about money management? When you were making an average income and when you started to make high six figures to a millionaire. Money management came in when I started making that money. Essentially, it just kind of happened. First of all, I had a situation where money came in so quick that I was able to make decisions because I, I made mistakes, but the money was coming in so quick that the mistakes were not critical. They were like little hiccups. When I was an average man making average money, I did not have these abilities because, you know, <clears throat> if you have some sense, when you start making the money, something's going to tell you that you need to preserve and be a good steward of this money. And, you know, I looked at my bank account. I had a brand new BMW outside that I paid cash for. I looked at my bank account. I had $128,000. I had a big check coming. And I felt rich. And I said, I like this feeling. I don't ever want to, I don't ever want to go back. I think this is one of the reasons that I, I manage money so well now is because at one point I didn't manage money very well at all. I was the worst person with money. Pawn shops, title pawn loan. I was doing everything with money that was wrong. I didn't save money. I mean, so I think having such a bad history with money prompted me to do much better when I got the money. Because I was like, I am never going back. I'm never going back to taking stuff to the pawn shop. I'm never going back to tie the pawn loans. I'm never going back to payday loans. I'm never going back to, hey, you know, can I borrow $25 to Friday because I'm short? I am not going back to that crap. And so once I started getting some money and it started to stack, I liked the feeling. It was a good feeling. I felt rich. I felt empowered. And I wanted to keep that feeling going. So that prompted me to manage money very well. <laughs> Trav, shouldn't you work these jobs long hours to make money, save and invest? If you don't know what your purpose is. Benny, my uncle was a meteor, got rich through a law school. Uh, everybody can't sue somebody and get rich. I mean, that's a uh, counter to what we're talking about. Email recipient, how did you start paid ads? I did not start doing paid ads until after I became a millionaire. It was, see, back then, YouTube was very good with organic growth. It was crazy. Ben, hey, Glendon, would you rather be rich at 23 or at 50? In my opinion, at 23, you'd be too young, and at 50, you'd be in a different spot of your life. I was in my 40s. When that happened, I feel that, you know, because with the research I was doing for the guys who are on the oil field, that the young guys, they just blow their money because they don't understand what they have and they don't know how to use it. So I would definitely be rather be richer in my 30s. Um, if I had gotten this kind of money... <laughs> When I was, cause like when, even even though yeah, I did stupid stuff. Like I I, I had fifty eight thousand dollars in the bank, took that money out the bank. Well, tried to, cause they didn't have the cash, so they had to give me a cashier's check. And when I got a brand new car and had two thousand dollars left, that was stupid. You know, fortunately for me, I had more money coming in next week, but you know about twenty thousand. But that was stupid. You know, if I had been smarter, I would have had 150000 in the bank and I would have took fifty out. And You know, I, I made all kinds of mistakes and I was in my 30s. <clears throat> sure, James, keep 200 to 1000 bucks in your wallet all the time. You know, finding your purpose is the thing. You will feel it. Oh, realistically, paid ads do work. And one of the reasons, one of the things that I deployed on the YouTube channel is I did a shotgun method. And it, this was like, I didn't have targeted ads. I just advertised to anyone and everybody and my sales went up. 
So the more traffic my channel got, the more sales that I made. And that's what I did. And I figured out a few other things that I was able to teach a few other YouTubers. My net, my net is like 95%. So, being a year, NBA players would be a great example. Happy entertainment is good to keep a few birds in the bush. Well, one of the things is to to get rich, you need a system in a vehicle. Like this is why most personal finance is so slow. This is why most personal finance takes decades to work because you're leveraging your income into more money. And because you don't have a high income, it takes such a long time because I just told you from start to finish, I became a millionaire in three years from writing the book using this YouTube channel as a marketing vehicle for the book. And you know, the storage auction shows helped greatly. And also just some business, you know, uh, some business tips. Like I raised the price of the book for $99 on Amazon. More people bought that book on Amazon than they did from my blog which was an incredible help, incredibly helpful. What you sell? I sold a book and I sell online courses. Uh, Jimmy, what do you think of Raph Smart? Can I get a hell up? That that's, dude is very smart. Raph is probably making millions. Millionaire next door would trick the average person to believe in that millionaire is supposed to do. Yeah, because I'm a I'm a digital citizen millionaire. I made all my money on the internet. I still make all my money on the internet. Yeah, you gotta take action. Douglas, 75% of NBA guys are bank NBA guys are bankrupt within three years of retiring. Good lord, I didn't know that. That's horrible. Happy Entertainment, find the customer, sell the product. That's pretty much, because when I wrote my book, I was knew that there was a lot of people who needed the book because no one had given an inside expose into the storage auction business. You know, I, in the book, I broke it down to what type of truck to use, how you start off with a pickup truck, what type of trailer to use. I broke it down like that because, you know, it enabled someone to get this book and immediately go out into the storage auction business and be competitive. <clears throat> a good book is the millionaire fast lane, which talks about doing this slowly versus getting wealthy much quicker. The internet, in my opinion, the internet, it was a game changer. <laughs> the internet changed everything. <laughs> Internet has made it possible for people to become a millionaire in a year or two. If you find the right product, the right service, and you deploy it correctly, the things that you can do. And I mean, the Internet made it possible for me. The Internet was the game changer for me. Internet made all this possible. <laughs> E-commerce is the future. It is the future. It's the present. It's everything. Uh, Bertha Koo, what are your top five? I, I don't really, I don't suggest any financial books. I'd suggest business books. Pitch anything. The ultimate sales machine. Because I, 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 you know, because the thing is with the personal finance channel, I'm going to start, I'm going to talk about the genesis of getting wealthy, making more money. You know, Dave Ramsey's show to talk about your income is the shovel, which you can bail your way out of debt. So the larger the income, the faster you, you can bail your way out of debt. Well, the larger the income, the faster you can invest money or the larger your income from your business the more you can live an abundant life. The 13 tone, I do 20 a month in sales on Amazon, nothing like that. Wi-Fi bread, that Wi-Fi bread is hard to bring. 
Amazon is shutting down the malls. Not necessarily. Uh, once again, these malls were sh shutting down because American has changed how they shopped in millennials. Millennials is the biggest generation not to have any money, not to have any wealth, and they are altering many markets. <laughs> I mean, yes, e-commerce, only 8 to 10% of sales are online. Most of it's still offline, pretty much. Short change, people making a lot of money, yet they have no savings, a big problem. I, I can't say I like or don't like Russell Bronson. I don't know anything about him. I know about ClickFunnels, but I don't know a lot about him. Carl Bank just registered my Amazon FBA business. Be careful with FBA. Jamal Trash, what do you think about subscription professional services? That is a it's cash flow. Uh, let, me, let me go through some books for y'all real quick. Pitch anything. So these are the books I would recommend. Pitch anything. Ultimate Sales Machine. <laughs> this one. I recommend this book. Automatic Customer. I mean, th this is a book I've read like four or five times. This is one of the reasons that I have the monthly payment plans because every month I have automatic, I have sales that come in without me doing anything. This is one of the, the books that will take your business to the next level if you can digest the concepts. The automatic customer. And I recommend the power of your subconscious mind. This one, <clears throat> this book right here. It's a game changer. These are books that I've read that I've gotten great benefit from. And this book, it's an old one. Personal Power by Tony Robbins. <laughs> His old books are excellent. <clears throat> uh, personal Power is hard to find. Let's see. Good Lord. Oh. You got to go to the Tony Robbins store to get personal power. Didn't know he had a store. <clears throat> uh, but that was a good book. And apparently he's changed it up because the book is hard to find. But those are the books that I recommend. I don't recommend financial books. I have never read a financial book. I read business books. I read books on how to do business, how to make my business better.
Russell Bronson got game. I've dropped, uh, I've dropped knowledge. All the mad customers, and those books will help you transform your life. Benny, I don't think millennials are lazy. Millennials are broke. That's one of their biggest problems. How to Sell the Humans, Daniel Pink. Do my name, it's what about a book for scale in the business? The, the Ultimate Sales Machine. <laughs> Carl Blink, I agree. FBA is not what it used to be, and I predicted that was going to happen. Ultimate Sales Machines is very good. Lead to fail. Yep. Um, once again, I would say if you wanted to learn how to do real estate, watch YouTube. Uh, I don't think there is any reason for anyone to spend a lot of money unless it's with a real estate investor who's going to personally mentor you. I mean, I learned all about wholesaling on YouTube, just watching like, you know, a few hundred videos about, you know, and there's one dude, he's got a free contract that you can download Uh, Shopify platform. If you know how to drive traffic, Shopify is great if you know how to drive traffic. Short change. Hustlers porn was big a few years ago. Now frugal channels are getting the popularity. I would agree. I am seeing uh, these people talk about not spending any money. This one guy, this video has got like 90,000 views talking about how he sold everything in his apartment. <laughs> Gee, my boy Flipman. Yes, he's got that contract. Shopify is not a scam. You know, for real estate, I mean, YouTube is, you know, just, just watch a bunch of YouTube videos. I suggest you watch a bunch of YouTube videos for two or three months. You'll learn so much about real estate from people who are doing real estate every day. Uh, there's this group, uh, Chris Haskins, Roundup. He doesn't get a lot of views, but he gives a lot of information. And, you know, because it's part of where he titles videos and how he sets some stuff up. Because there's a lot of real estate channels that are just not, they, they give group information, but they're not blowing up because they don't know how to manipulate the YouTube algorithm. Look at Max Maxwell. You know, he met with Gary V. and clearly he studied some stuff. His channel blew up. His group on Facebook has like 50, 60,000 people. So he clearly learned some stuff. <clears throat> Patman Stapa, that sounds like Amazon, bro. Amazon will take your information and, and, and just bail with it. They will. But once again, you know, to become a millionaire, time is a critical component. You, you got to start saying to yourself, what can I do to get more time? And what can I do to be more efficient? Getting the Facebook real estate groups. Yep. So one of the, the big things is, because once again, when the storage auction business, I cared more about money than I cared about time because I worked six, seven days a week and I wasn't looking at my time the way that I look at it now because, you know, you don't see any videos on Saturday because I'm sitting around watching football. You know, it's football season. And Sunday, unless it's you no, know, like Sunday, uh, the Baltimore Ravens Patriot game was exciting. Lamar Jackson is the truth. Dude is the truth. He does some stuff that just blows my mind. And, you know, he's doing the same thing in the NFL he did in college. Same thing. Messing people up. 100% <clears throat> finance, bigger pockets is good for real estate. I mean, there, there's so many channels. 
and bigger pockets brings on the real estate investors talking about everything from subject to to wholesaling to trailer park investing it is a mindset because it, it, it's a mindset that operates in the background because when I wrote the book and I put this YouTube marketing program together I was working on process and systems. And that's one of the ways that you're going to become a millionaire is process and systems. Because you can't do it. You, I mean, you could work 100 hours a week. They ain't going to make you a millionaire. And one of the things is, like, you know, with the earlier stream that I was talking, it was aimed at young men who have no ambition, no direction. And, you know, it was just a message to them So that they, you know, just to awareness, just creating awareness of some of the options that are out there that some people don't know about. So when I was doing my thing and becoming more aware of the things that were happening the exposure you know I went through a period of extreme growth period of Extreme growth, extreme activity, extreme. But see, the, the whole thing is, the whole millionaire game is you got to get a vehicle. That's your, you know, that's your thing. Like some people use stocks. Some people use a business. Some people use real estate. And, you know, in the beginning, if you don't have much money, you're just going to have to reinvest everything. Like Byron Allen, you know, for five years, he was just making phone calls, reinvesting, paying bills. And then once he got the system in the template set, he replicated it 47 more times. As they used to say in the living color, more money, more money, more money. Because at that point, he knew what he was doing. He had the connections. He was, you know, it, it was just a different ball game. My boy Brady still got the bowl. Brady looked kind of shaky. He looked a little shaky. His age is starting to catch up with him. First of all, you got to find an audience. You know, once again, you got to find an audience that wants what you have to sell. M. Sway, New Orleans, winning the Super Bowl. Uh, Carl book, a uh, great book that talks about systemizing your business is traction. Benny, get around the right people as well. I work at a public school and they just have negative attitude towards money. I don't know who Alizé Cahoon is. Uh, the real James 100, what you should do is take your $2,000, put it back in the bank, start you a service business, and start making money. You know, because one of the things that I talk about, well, first of all, before you get into partnerships, you, you really need to, this is, this is one of the things, you should read books on subject matter on what you are doing. Because if you're just going out reading books and you're not really doing anything with it, that's just kind of, that could be a waste of time. So if you're doing real estate, read real estate books, listen to real estate, immerse yourself in whatever you're doing. You know, typically I read books, you know, because I've got a Facebook course that I'm paying for. And I, and I also have um, a YouTube course that I'm in.
Torrance play playlist. Just going into big box stores to talk to the manager, offer my service. Business got me more business. I mean, you got to be a salesman. You got to be, you know, about awareness. But once again, whatever business you have, like I got a friend has a car wash and he systemized his car wash. He got it set up where he's got people where he could take vacation because uh, I was there and he was calling me and he's like, hey, I'm in Mexico. Because he's got cameras set up where he can watch what people are doing when he's on vacation. And he's got two, three people to collect the money and put the money in the bank. So he's freed himself on and he owns a lot of rental property. I'm talking about like 35 houses that, because, you know, uh, his business does about two million a year. And, you know, when he started rolling, he started buying houses every year, paying cash, putting the renter in there, paying cash, putting the renter in there. So, you know, he's got money on lock. But, you know, you, you're going to have to have some kind of system. My system that made me money, the first system was using this YouTube channel to market the book to create exposure and awareness about storage options. Because before I did it, no one knew no one knew about this. Dan, Dot, Dan, the storage auction uh, auctioneer, he had a YouTube channel. And... Um, he was talking about it a little bit, but he didn't talk about it like I talked about it. I gave, you know, I made people feel like they were actually at an auction. They actually bought a unit, just the stories and talking about it. So you, you're going to need a system in the vehicle. Uh, you look at into the gloss. All right. She started this company. I mean, you know, this blog was her system because Into the Gloss is behind Glossier. And this girl may become a billionaire in less than 10 years. Let me go ahead and tell you what she did. She did something similar to what I did, but she did it in a vertical, and this is a marketplace, and it's a, a vertical that's a consumable. Makeup is a consumable, because you know, a girl likes a certain lipstick or whatever. She's going to buy that over and over again. So she used this blog as an information dump to collect information. And the information that she got from this blog about what women wanted and what they were responded to, she went to an, a VC, an investment banker, and got a million dollar check. Just off this blog after three, almost four years. Then uh, I think uh, Glossier, let's see what their valuation is. Glossier raised a hundred million now has a billion billion dollar has a billion dollar evaluation. This was like literally after seven years. This was this year. The company now has a one point two billion dollar and this is the owner of Glossier. Her name is Emily Weiss. And once again, she's a little rich girl. She grew up riding horses. Anybody that knows how much money it takes to keep a horse, her folks had money. She was connected. She was uh, working at Vanity Fair. Um, so she just she wasn't a you know she was in close proximity to money, wealth, and she had connections. And th this is the whole reason that I say you should position your kids into the gloss quickly gain popularity, generating about 10 million page views a month with 60% of the readers checking the site daily. Wes realized that many people didn't have brand loyalty and decided to create a direct consumer line of beauty products in October 2014 with products like 
lipblam.com lip blondes milky jelly cleanser and the cloud paint brush like into the gloss garza gained the following today it has 1.9 million followers on instagram alone the company's annual revenue has doubled more than doubled in 2008 surpassing 100 million a year's gained more than a 1 million new customers and they launched a second brand glossier play according to the states so you know this once again she's going to become a billionaire emily weiss is going to become a billionaire and you know she spent her time collecting information about women which proved to be extremely profitable so this, this you got to have a vehicle and you got to have a system and you got to have a plan you know just becoming a millionaire it, it doesn't happen by accident So one of the things you have to do, because I didn't realize that I was creating a system because I, I had like a, a schedule and, then, you know, I was putting up certain videos when the video would do well, then I would put more videos up like that. And I had a feedback loop and I just consistently did videos about storage auctions. And, you know, hey, this is Glendon Cameron, um, writer of making money A to Z with self-storage human auctions. That's how I started all those videos and people either went to my blog and got the PDF or they went to Amazon and got the book. And I mean, money just started coming in. I remember telling a friend, um, my business partner, sister, that I was making more money than I knew what to do with. It was just coming in like crazy. I mean, more money. And for me, it was somewhat of a mind, it messed my mind up because, you know, I, was, I had the storage auction business that was really profitable, worked hard, worked six, seven days a week. Then I wasn't really doing nothing. I mean, I was doing like two videos a week at the time and my checks kept getting bigger. And this is the power of having a system. James Trash, I'm a writer and other. How should I conduct business? You should put out a product that people want. Should you buy a single family to live in with your own family, invest in a two family home and rent it out? If you want to make money, you would invest in the rental property. Fester, how to be a millionaire, give massive value. I I'm going to disagree with that a little bit because. People give a rat, you know, like everyone talks about value. You know, these people are giving these podcasts. Everyone's giving value. Serve people. Give people something that they can use. Give people something that they need. And you're going to do much better. T-Tone Fitness, thanks for the $20 super chat. Learn packaging and write good copy. Should you have 50K or more saved before investing and keep stacking for my service business? Essentially, you know, depending on, first thing is before you start investing is you should be at 100% out of debt. You know, you've got a mortgage, okay, cool. But other than that, no credit card debt, no student loan debt, because your money's going to go further. Benny, that's funny. Sell what people are already buying. That's one way to do it. That's one way to set it up. And another way to do it is to look at long-term possibilities. You know, I'm getting ready to start all over again with a new system. And you got to look at, you know, like right now I'm getting ready to do a financial channel, personal finance, because personal finance channels blow up on YouTube. 
everybody's looking for how to do with my money. I found one the other day. The guy's only been on 18 months. He's got 214,000 subscribers. He drops a video and gets a lot of views. Personal finance is a big, and what I'm gonna bring to the marketplace is personal finance with a twist. Make more money. You got this job, you know, and I'm gonna talk about like half of America doesn't make enough money to invest. You're making $33,000 a year and you've got the typical bills of America, you have no money to invest. I mean, you you do good to put 50 bucks a month away. And 50 bucks a month away is like 600 bucks a year. You do that for 10 years. That That's like $6,000. They ain't really going to move the needle. Dynamis, $9.99. When people buy a book... Page length has a lot to do with pricing. Carl Black, do you think Kindle Publishing is a viable option to start with? If you like writing and you enjoy the writing process, yes. I've gotten writer friends who are still making fifteen, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars a month from Amazon and Kindle. But these are writers. They're they're not people who just like, hey, you know, I'm gonna try to exploit the Kindle algorithm because Kindle starts shutting down a lot of that stuff. <clears throat> If you like to write, you got a catalog because uh, I actually wrote some dirty books and I was making like $10,000 a month. And I just had 15 books. You know, if you, you know, I, I, I will tell you, uh, coloring books are big on Amazon. People are selling coloring books. So it just depends. So one of the big things is, you know, build a system, get a proper vehicle, and the vehicle is going to be a system. A vehicle is just not going to be a hustle. A hustle is I wake up, I open up Craigslist, I go out, I do some stuff, I come back with money. A system is a plan, a process on how to get money. Yeah, I mean, 50 pages, people are going to be like kind of like 50 pages, nine ninety nine, And that's that was the old Amazon Kindle before they changed all the rules. They made a lot of big changes. But, you know, uh, erotica, romance is the biggest literary section romance which includes erotica and all these other dirty books good fellow nail turn your self-employment into a system and turn it into a vehicle Benny in my honest opinion this is the only way you know what works doesn't work it's just getting started Oh, the hardest part is getting started, but and that that's one of the things that helped me with that three year process because I was a self starter. I already knew how to work hard. I already knew how to market. I knew how to sell, and all of this contributed to the success of the book because I'm getting ready to start another YouTube channel, create a whole different suite of products. Uh, Wayne Kirk TV, where do you think the new way of marketing is going online? Still Facebook ads, there's Google ads. Um, there is no really new way of marketing. And offline marketing, radio, TV, billboards, that still works. You ever been on a, a long drive and you get into one of these cities and you see like 15 billboards in a row telling you what's coming up? It works. They got those billboards for a reason because... If you were driving on that road and those billboards weren't there, you wouldn't know what was ahead. Even though it's on the internet, unless you're specifically looking like the billboards, like, bam, right in your face. Uh, you go to Los Angeles, you'll see YouTubers with billboards because they work.
short change. I think people tune into saving money channels because making money requires effort and saving takes dif- discipline. Could be. I'll find out. Hustle Kung Fu, been a minute since I listened to you. My bear pig. I've been thinking about getting systems down. Garage sales and thrift stores can have some great finds, but sometimes I can't find things. Um, it, sometimes it just gets dry out there, man. That's why you got to buy when you can buy. Put that stuff away. But once again, I mean, one of the things is you got to read this book like three or four times. So the first time you just read it, the second time you go over it and take notes. Because this, this like, literally 12 books, the, the books I gave you, if you take those books and digest them properly, they could all change your life. Like the automatic sales machine ended my problem of, you know, every month I started at big zero with sales. And now I have X amount of dollars coming in. And I don't lift a finger. And, you know, this is how the next suite of products will be sold. You know, I will start getting these things going. <clears throat> Branding was important. Branding's very important. You know, McDonald's is a system. Waffle House is a system. Waffle House got their system broke down so, so cool that they can go ahead and build a new Waffle House restaurant and have that sucker up and running in two weeks. The real James, do you think YouTube will start paying more than that revenue, more consumers start coming to YouTube or will they increase it? No, YouTube will increase the money. YouTube is already put up, you know, you got to have X amount of subscribers just to get paid. Uh, I've noticed that my asset money has gone up. Oh, I talk trash to him, Benny. What's up, Paul Bunyan? I talk a lot of trash to them because, you know, after, I mean, I've been doing this 10 years and, you know, I'm just used to it. And honestly, the troll, I mean, these trolls today are nothing compared to the trolls I had when I got started. I had people digging in. I had people creating fake channels that were similar to my channel to leave comments to the people who were leaving positive comments. My trolls were working overtime. Uh, the Namus, Amazon. Carl Blank, I have a friend that wants to start a YouTube channel focused on garden, but concerned about the ad crisis. Uh, they should just go ahead and start if they're serious. YouTube is, for most YouTubers, a slow play. Like, when I started YouTube, I didn't get ad money until 2011, and I started my channel in 2009. But at that point, I really didn't care. I was making money from my channel without the ad money. What's up, Miss Curly Girl Murray? Savannah watching. All right. I don't know, Benny, but I mean, these trolls were like cussing out people. I had people doing response videos. I put up a video. People would do stuff, and there was a lot of hate. There was a lot of hate, and these guys spent so much time messing with me, their own businesses crumbled. You know, I just stayed in my lane. I, I, I you know, I, I went ahead and had channels deleted. I reported them, and I kept doing my thing. I mean, you know, YouTube is a great platform, and I think, you know, the new channel is going to do a little bit better. Uh, I'm going to still maintain disruptive mail, probably one or two videos a week, and I will just get a whole collection of channels up here. You know, what's funny is disruptive mail makes a lot of money, even though I don't post that many videos, because once again, from this channel, I learned from my mistakes because I had courses and stuff that I went through and I would get these emails. Hey man, I really want this course. Is it available? 
And I learned like once you create a course and you create these links, don't change them. And you know, every I mean, every day I'm getting someone buying something from Disruptive Mail. And the channel only has 1,840 subscribers. The channel's doing about 18K a month. Passively. I, I'm not really doing that much with it. So Miss Down, I say, geez, is it too late to start a drop shipping company? You mean, is it too late to get in on the easy gravy chain? Yeah, that's been gone like three years. But if you work hard and you do the right things, you can still make money with drop shipping. I have no competitors with disruptive mail. Wayne Kirk, when you first started out, you were making a lot of content daily. And what do you think grabs people's attention the most you saw in your journey doing the YouTube stuff? Controversy. When I started doing the Craigslist stories, people gravitated toward that. So once again, you know, like I'm getting ready to start all kinds of YouTube stuff because YouTube is out of Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat. YouTube as the Van Life Girl show, you can still get a lot of organic traffic. You hit the algorithm the right way. It's the only place you can get this kind of traffic. Like uh, Janelle, the van girl, she didn't quit her job already. And she didn't bought another van. So that tells me the girls make about 10, 15 K a month. Good fellow now. I do digital marketing, but I don't want to do a do a course on YouTube. It's too gimmicky. I need that YouTube bread. I mean, hey, you know, you gotta create a channel and get into the mix. You gotta get into the mix. Because once again, if you're willing to do the work, drop shipping, Amazon FPA, you know, they can make they can give you enough money to escape to buy back your time. Because I, I think, you know, on Amazon, FBA, you can still set up where you can get 150, 200, 300K a year. After that, it gets very challenging. And right now, Amazon, you know, Amazon FBA has have to buy ads on Amazon to move their products. So that's funny. Carl Blank, you know, if you're getting ready for the holidays right now, you late. People start preparing for fourth quarter, second quarter, the serious people. They start making their calculations. They start allocating their budgets because uh, when, you know, Christmas, I met this girl at this party and she says, I sell Christmas. And she was at the apparel mart and they, you know, people buying Christmas ornaments and stuff for Christmas. They were buying that stuff in January and February. So, you know, you, you late trying to get ready for fourth quarter. Eric Williams, yes, she's making bank. Gilbert the Entrepreneur, what do you think about the business loan broker business? If you're in there, you know somebody, you connect it. Because uh, to get any type of banking, finance, business brokering, anything with money, those institutions are very insular and there's a lot of nepotism. Because, I mean, all right, you, you work Monday through Friday, you sit at the desk, you make half a million a year. You, those kind of jobs, they ain't just going to the best candidate. They go into friends of family. I mean, like I saw this with the commercial real estate business. It was like I met this one guy and it, it took me a minute. And I was like, oh, is that your father? Yeah, that's my dad. This is what they do. They bring the family in. You, you know, the, these cushy easy, big money jobs. You got to know somebody. You got to be connected. That's why I said like the oil field, they don't care who you are. They don't even care if you have a record. They don't even care if you're a felon. If you go out there and do this, but to get into these super cushy jobs that make a lot of money, you got to know somebody. Good feeling now. PayPal looks at your 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 history with them. That's all they look at. If you run a lot of money through your PayPal account, they will eventually offer you a loan. 
And I mean, you know, you got to be careful because some of these fees can be kind of steep. But for what they offer, uh, the reason I take the PayPal loans is they defer my taxable income. Whatever I, you know, I took out $350,000 for the loans this year. So whenever PayPal sends whatever they send to the Internal Revenue Service, they're going to deduct that three fifty. So that offsets my taxable income a lot. Not messing up gravy jobs. I got into a gravy patient transport job only because my cousin and friend was in it already. This is where networking becomes very important. There are certain career fields, certain career tracks that uh, unless you know somebody and they know you and recommend you, you ain't getting in. Uh, Brian Tracy talked about this years ago. He said fully 70% of the job market was hidden because it was who you knew. And I think it's even more so that day. I don't really think nothing of Arizona. The T-Tone, that's why selling name brand products from distributors is the best for me. I only I spend zero on ads. Once again, I mean, you've been in it, T-Tone. And a lot of people would like to make 20 k a month. They would love to make 20K a month. <laughs> Get in on this Wi-Fi bread because understand YouTube, podcasting, certain areas on Facebook, there's so much room to grow. There, there's so much room to grow. You just got to do the work. <laughs> Eric Williams, ha ha, the... This, let the secret out. That's why folks take loans before they needed tax breaks. Yeah, I mean, that's why I take the PayPal loans because they defer my tax break. I mean, $350,000 I'm not going to have to pay taxes on. That's significant because the Internal Revenue Service would want like damn near 100 of that. So taking out, even with the fees and stuff, I come out way much, much better ahead than if I don't take the loans. Benny, life isn't fair. Gilbert Dendron, 20K a month of revenue, not profit. Uh, T-Tone said he was doing like 20K a month. And he made it sound like profit. Benny, young people need to get that message. I mean, there's so much opportunity out here, man. I mean, and it took me coming out of a very physical a very hard business, which I thoroughly enjoyed and I made a lot of money to open my eyes to the power of YouTube because you cannot get me off of YouTube. You're not going to get me off the internet. I mean, the money can be sick once you put together a process. Roger Marine. I charge over 100 per hour for my time as an IT professional. Good for you. You know, once again, you, you need a vehicle and your vehicle needs to be in alignment with your purpose because if you go ahead and you start a business that's not in alignment with your purpose and you get into a business like this happened to me with the resale community, I actually hated the resale community. It was petty. I had people it's like, hey, I'm just going to come here for your free information. I'm not going to buy any of your courses. Leaving that in the comments like that was cool. I got sick of them. And I was like, you know what? I'm not doing resale anymore. I had a resale group that was making me money. I actually like let that go, turned everything over, and changed the direction of the channel. Because what's the point in doing something on purpose that you hate? And I hated those people. They were so petty. Thank you, Andrew Johnson. Jake, remember, remember Steve the Dean and AMS got into it about dating? I never really saw that. I heard about it. The real James, being a locksmith makes pretty good money. People lose their car keys every weekend. That's funny. That is hilarious. But once again, Get into something that aligns with your purpose. And if you don't know what your purpose is, start exploring that. 
ask yourself, where do I want to live? What kind of lifestyle do I want to live? You know, at one point, I was thinking about moving to Manhattan Beach, California. Then I started looking at the real estate prices, and I was like, do I really want to do this? Because I have exposure here in Georgia, and this house right here, Manhattan Beach, to get this same deal sitting on almost two acres, I'd be paying like 10, 15 million. I don't have 10, 15 million for a piece of real estate. That's, that's like almost close to my complete net worth. That doesn't make any sense to buy one piece of property. So I would have to increase my net worth times 10 to move out there. Which could be part of the plan. Because as you see with this new personal finance channel, we're going to get into some different kind of stuff. All right, so once again, to begin your journey to entrepreneurship, go to Hustlers Kung Fu Life Skills. I recommend that you get the Money Management, the Basics of Finance and Wealth Development course to start off, then 30 days to 2,500. Because once you, you got to manage the money that you already have. That is paramount. And this course will teach you to stack your money, segment your money, so then when you introduce new money into your life, it stays around. It becomes like a family member. It's like money is my family member. So go ahead and get that. So with that, I will see you guys.